This video is going to give you an introduction to probability trees. Before we can go into probability trees, we first have to define the general multiplication rule. So it turns out that most events are not independent from one another. Generally, when you're looking at two separate events, there's some kind of a relationship between the two of them. We need a different rule to take this into consideration. The multiplication rule for independent events was nice, but it's not always going to hold. What the general multiplication rule says is if A and B are any two events, then the probability of A and B both occurring is equal to the marginal probability of A times the conditional probability of B given that A has already occurred. Now notice that this is just the definition of the conditional probability rearranged. Conditional probability told us the probability of B given A was equal to the joint probability divided by the marginal probability of the event that's already occurred. All we've done to get the general multiplication rule is rearrange that equation. Turns out this is a little bit more convenient to use whenever we set up probability trees. So for example, let's say we have four red balls and four black balls in a box. We select two of them without replacement, and we want to know the probability that both balls selected are red. Here's an observation. The probability of the second ball being red depends on the color of the first ball. Since you're not putting the first ball back, you don't know how many red balls and how many black balls are still going to be in the box whenever you go to take that second one out. So here's what we're going to do. The events are not independent, so we're going to apply the general multiplication rule. Let's let A be the event that the first ball is red, and we'll let B be the event that the second ball is red. Here's our box. Here are the four red balls and the four black balls. The probability that A occurs is equal to 4 over 8. You have four red balls in the box, eight balls altogether, so the probability that A occurs is just 4 over 8. We take that red ball out. Now we're ready to select the second ball. Notice now that there are only three red balls in the box and seven balls altogether. What this means is given that event A has occurred, given that we select a red ball first, the probability of event B occurring, the probability that the second ball we select is red, is down to 3 over 7. There are only 3 red balls divided by 7 possible opportunities to select some kind of a ball from the box. In order to figure out the probability that both A and B occur, we need the probability of A, the probability that the first ball is red, times the probability of B given A, the probability that the second ball is red, given that the first event has already occurred. Probability of A is 4 eighths. The probability of B given A is 3 sevenths, which gives us a final probability of 12 over 56. So the probability that we select two red balls without replacing the first one is 12 over 56. Now that we've seen the general multiplication rule, we can define a probability tree. A probability tree is a graphical technique that displays the relationship between two variables where these two variables are not independent of one another. There is some relationship between the two of them. Meaning, in order to understand the probability that the second event occurs, you have to know the probability that the first event occurred. Probability trees use the general multiplication rule because these events are not independent. The simplest type of probability tree looks like this. You have one set of branches at the very beginning for your independent event, the event that, that does not depend on the second event. The second set of branches is a dependent event. So this is the event that relies on which outcome occurred for your first event, from the independent event. Here's how we construct the probability tree. It's a three-step process. Along the first set of branches, you have a set of marginal probabilities. So let's say we're looking at event A. Event A does not depend on any other event. So along the top, we have the probability that A occurs. Along the bottom, we have the probability that A does not occur. Along the second set of branches, we have conditional probabilities. So let's say we're looking at event B, and event B depends on whether or not A has occurred. 
up top, following the top path where A has occurred, we have the probability of B given A, so the probability that B does occur, given that we know A has occurred. And along the blue branch is the probability that B does not occur, given that we know A has occurred. We do the same thing down at the bottom. Probability of B given A complement, so now we know for a fact that A did not occur. So following the blue branch along the bottom, and then the red branch is the probability that B occurs, given that A does not occur. Following both blue branches is the probability that B does not occur, given that A does not occur. The third step in constructing your probability tree is to multiply along each path. This will give you your joint probabilities. We're going to do this using the general multiplication rule. So the probability of A and B is the probability of A, the marginal probability of A, times the conditional probability of B given A. You just multiply along that path. Your next probability, probability of A and B complement, is the probability of A times the probability of B complement given A. So multiply the probability first along the red branch and then along the blue branch. To get your next joint probability, A complement and B, it's the probability of A complement times the probability of B given A complement. And your final joint probability, the probability of A complement and B complement, is the probability of A complement times the probability of B complement given A complement. These probabilities that I've boxed in all sum to 1. So the sum of your marginal probabilities at the beginning, A and A complement, those add up to 1. Each set of conditional probabilities, those also add up to 1. And then all four of your joint probabilities at the end of your probability tree, those all add up to 1 as well. Let's take a look at an example of constructing this probability tree. 34% of teachers are male. 72% of male teachers are qualified to teach math, while 84% of female teachers are qualified to teach math. What we need to do is construct the probability tree. Now, the first thing you should do when you approach a probability tree problem is to ask which variable depends on the other. In this case, whether or not the person is qualified depends on their gender. So here's the given information that we have. The probability of being a male teacher is 0.34. The probability of being qualified given that that teacher is male is 0.72. Here's where the conditional probability comes into play and the fact that qualification to teach is depending on gender. Alternatively, the probability of being qualified given that the person is female is 0.84. Now what we can do is take this information and put it on the probability tree. Along the top branch, we put the marginal probability of being male. The probability of being male is 0.34. And since our marginal probabilities have to add up to 1, this means that the probability of being female is 1 minus 0.34, or 0.66. We have the marginal probability set. Now we can fill in the conditional probabilities. The probability of being qualified, given that the person is male, is 0.72. This was given to us in the context of the problem. We already know this person is male. Now we're looking at the probability that the person is qualified, given that they're male. Since we know this is 0.72, also what this means is that the probability that a person is not qualified, given that the person is male, has to be 0.28. These two conditional probabilities have to add up to 1 as well. Now we can move down to the bottom set of branches. The probability of a person being qualified given that they're female is 0.84, which means that the probability that a person is not qualified given that they're female is 0.16. That set of conditional probabilities has to add up to 1 as well. Now what we can do is we can take our marginals, we can take our conditionals, multiply them together to get the joint probabilities for each combination of these two events. The 
probability that a person is qualified and male is 0.34 times 0.72, which gives you 0.2448. The probability that a person is not qualified and male is 0.34 times 0.28, which gives you 0 0.0952. The probability of being qualified and female, 0.66 times 0.84 which gives you 0.5544, and the probability of not being qualified and being female, 0.66 times 0.16, which gives you 0.1056. And you'll notice all four of those joint probabilities sum to one as well. I want to give you one example of how you can use this probability tree. We want to know what's the probability that a person is qualified to teach math regardless of their gender. Now the problem that we have here is that we don't have the probability of being qualified directly from the tree. We have the marginal probability of being male and the marginal probability of being female. We don't have a marginal probability of being qualified. Here's our strategy. We're going to break down the event being qualified based on the gender. We only have two possibilities. A person can be qualified and male, or they can be qualified and female. So we can rewrite our probability as the probability of being qualified is the probability of being qualified and male plus the probability of being qualified and female. Taking a look at our probability tree, we have those two joint probabilities. We don't have the marginal probability of being qualified directly, but we have the individual joint probabilities that allow us to figure out the overall marginal probability of being qualified to teach math. The probability of being qualified and male is 0.2448. The probability of being qualified and female is 0.5544. What this means is that we can now take those joint probabilities, plug them into our equation. From the tree, we know that the probability of being qualified in male is 0.2448, qualified in female, 0.5544. So our overall probability for being qualified, the marginal probability for being qualified, is the sum of these two individual probabilities, which gives us 0.7992.